everybody. Happy Wednesday. This is Wednesdays with Wendy and I am Dr. Wendy Bohan from the Incorporated Research Institutions for Seismology. Today we're going to talk about my favorite thing, which is earthquakes. So last week we talked about the tectonic plates. So the surface of the earth is covered by a thin skin of rock called the crust. The crust is moving around really slowly in these gigantic puzzle pieces, right? And the places where they come together are the places where we have the most earthquakes. These earthquakes occur along faults. So what we have here is called the earthquake machine. This is a mechanical model of uh, a fault, and we're gonna make some earthquakes. Okay, are you ready? First, let's just play with it and see what it does. We have this block here, and we have two pieces of sandpaper. Some really scratchy sandpaper here and some scratchy sandpaper here. For those of you admiring my manicure, if you would like one like that, I recommend locking yourself in the house for two weeks with five-year-olds. Then you too could have this beautiful manicure. Okay, so I'm gonna pull really gently over here and we'll see what happens with the block. Look at that rubber band. Okay, so what is this? What's happening? So a fault is where two blocks of rock come together and they're held together by friction. That's the sandpaper part. So you have two blocks of rocks that are together, but what, what is this rubber band? Here's something I bet you didn't know. This is really cool. Rocks are actually elastic. They can bend into form. That's called strain. And so this is like the rocks in the crust. It can actually store up potential energy that will eventually be released as kinetic energy and also a little bit of heat. So what is the pulling part? What am I doing over here? What's driving these earthquakes? Do you remember? The motion of the tectonic plates. So me pulling over here is basically like the motion of the tectonic plates. So you can think of this whole thing like a tectonic plate. This would be, let's say, the middle, like, you know, up here in the middle of the Pacific plate. And then the fault over here would be like the locked part, which would be over there, the part that's making the earthquakes. So as I'm pulling, as the tectonic plate, potential energy is getting stored up in the rocks, which is the rubber band. And eventually, eventually there's going to be enough energy in here that it's going to overcome the friction between the two sides of the fault. Let's watch that happen. Did you see that there was different amounts of energy stored up each time? This brings us to another point, predicting earthquakes. We all really wish we could predict earthquakes. Like, really, you have no idea. So, let's see if we can predict earthquakes just using this really simple model. And keep in mind, the Earth is much more complex. So, all right, we're gonna guess. You're gonna guess at home and I'm gonna guess here. We're gonna guess when the earthquake is gonna happen and how big it's gonna be, whether it's gonna slide a lot or slide a little bit. Okay, here we go. I think this one is gonna be big and it's gonna happen now. Now, now. I didn't do very well. How did you do? Did you do better? Okay, I think this one's gonna be small and it's gonna happen now. I was very close, but not right on target. Okay, let's try it again. You ready? That was a lot of little ones. Wow, that was a pretty big earthquake, right? Did you get any right? Did you get any exactly right? Because I didn't. And if we're going to be able to predict earthquakes, we have to know exactly when they're going to happen and about how big they're going to be. Because trust me, you don't want to know every earthquake. About 14 earthquakes a day happen in California. Most of them are too small to feel. So you really don't want to know when every earthquake is going to happen, just when the big earthquakes might happen. And so instead of predicting earthquakes, what geologists do is forecast earthquakes, kind of like a weather forecast. So we would say, the weathermen would say something like, there's a 50% chance of rain today, carry an umbrella. What geologists would say is, there's a 75% chance of a magnitude seven or greater earthquake in the next 30 years. Be prepared for earthquakes. See what I mean? So let's play with this just a little bit more. What happens if we change the friction? Because faults are different, right? Some faults are um, like this, some faults are like that. Almost no faults are actually shaped like this where they're flat down. So we're gonna change the friction by adding a little bit of 
weight. Does that increase or decrease the friction here? That would increase the friction, right? So is it gonna take more energy here to get stored up to pull or less? More. I hope it doesn't break my rubber band. What if I release it suddenly? <laughs> Big earthquake, right? So what could actually do that in, in the real world? What could change the frictional properties along the fault? Well, water could do that. That's what's happening in some places like in Oklahoma and North Texas. We're adding water into the subsurface during a process called wastewater injection. And that actually changes the frictional properties of the faults in that area, which causes them to have earthquakes. Most of them are pretty small. But it's kind of interesting to see that we can't predict earthquakes even using this really simple system. Now, imagine that instead of this simple system, it's a real fault where there's different rock types that have different frictional properties, where there's changes in heat and water. Now imagine that it's not just one fault, but it's a whole bunch of faults, hundreds of faults, because that's what plate boundaries actually are. They're made up of hundreds of faults that are accumulating all of the stress and strain of the tectonic plates as they're moving along. So again, I'm gonna include some resources uh, in the comments so that you can learn more about this. If you're interested in doing something like this for a science fair project, we have a lot of resources where you can figure out and do some statistical modeling of faults, which is like super cool and sounds very impressive, but it's not really very hard. So you can definitely do it and it's, it's even fun. And um, I'll have a, a more information about elastic rebound theory and other things. So thank you for joining me and we'll see you next Wednesday.